It is uh, with a great pleasure that I welcome today Dr. Jean-Claude Gamberto. We are going to talk about a new way to think about anatomy, what's new about human anatomy. Jean-Claude is a, a co-founder and scientific director of the Institute of Aquitaine of the Hand. So he's working close to Bordeaux, the area that gives us this very uh, delicious wine. He's a reconstructive surgeon, and we can say he dedicated himself to microsurgery, transplantation. He was past president of the French Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, and he's a co-author of many books. One of them is New Ideas in Hand Surgery. What's amazing with Jean-Claude is he helped us see in vivo, in living tissue, the extracellular metrics, the adipose tissue and the vessels of the fascia using an endoscopy, intracellular endoscopy. And so we investigate this fascia structure in human, in living tissue, and show, show, showed us amazing uh, um, uh, uh, areas under the, 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 the fascia, and uh, it, it is quite re revolutionary. Welcome, Jean-Claude. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure also for me to meet you and to have the opportunity to discuss about, uh, you say, fascia. and But in fact, it, uh, fascia is an evolution of what we knew before as connective tissue. It's a new way of thinking, connective tissue. And um, yes, I, I did during 15 years, a lot of uh, intratissular exploration during surgeries. That's mean do, with patient, that's mean in vivo. So it's observation of the reality of what happened under the skin. And I have been really surprised by what I have seen. And because I know I was not really prepared for that, because you are in front of a, a way, a behavior surprising and giving explanation to many things without any answer. So I think now we can say that anatomy is not finished to be known. Anatomy is in moving. We can say that the vessel use period can be, is not achieved, but the vessel use period can be now as a post vesalius period. I mean that Vesalius period is from the 16th century up to now, with always the same way of thinking anatomy, a human body with different organs giving function, and between these organs, you have the connective tissue. Connective tissue, which sometimes is uh, known as a packaging, packaging tissue, and which has been neglected for three centuries. And in fact, after endoscopy exploration, I can say that this connective tissue is in fact our constitutive tissue, our inner architecture. Yes. And Let's, let me show them a bit the photo. So just to remind them um, for anatomy, Andreas Vesalius was actually born in Brussels and he was uh, one of the most influential books on human anatomy. And, yes. and uh, it's called the Umarni Corporis, something like this. And he came about 1600 years after the first anatomist, Erophilos and Erasistros. And they are, um, because they, they didn't let people do too many human dissection. 
So we have this amazing book that influenced us even, I think today people get still influenced by Vesalius. After Galan, we got Vesalius and then it's yeah. just, just amazing. So I just want to show people how you surprise all of us with your endoscopy and what, what's so original. Before we go a little bit further, what's so original about your work? So I uh, we came to uh, to uh, we went to Bordeaux actually. And yes. This is the beautiful Jean Claude on the right. I am on the left, and we see the hand of a patient, and you can see the endoscope during surgery, looking in human tissue, and this is what Jean Claude is using. It magnifies about sixty times. And Jean-Claude, it was something used by gynecologist initially, correct? This endoscopy? Well, this endoscope was used for hysteroscopy. Hystero expression of the uterus. Yeah. To observe the uterus and to see if uh, women have a metaplasia. And this very bright light give us... Give us a, yes, a it's a cold light. It's a cold light with magnification 25, but you can upgrade to 60. And the quality with the camera, it's a HD camera, you can have a perfect, perfect uh, focusing and you can, definition is very good. So you can have good movies, good films, good photos. Amazing. So with those, we saw your amazing picture that we're going to see in a minute. So we were talking, I didn't want to interrupt you. You were talking about fascia. Do you want to give us a, a quick, you know, we are talking about so many new definitions for fascia. You yes. want to give us a quick definition, how you define fascia? Because I look into wiki, it was so weak. The definition was just, you know, band of sheet of connective tissue, different from ligaments and tendons because of its location, because of its uh, structure, and it's but, but, old. Yeah. You, you are right, Bruno. Uh, it, it's a big problem for what I, I can say for fascia uh, research. In fact, the question, the main question is, what is fascia? Because if you are talking to Osteopath, some osteopath, they have a definition. You are moving in another country, osteopath has another definition. So it's difficult. But the main difference with some osteopath and me is that they consider that the fascia is a densification of fibers. Uh, after muscles or near muscles. Continue. So at the mas macroscopic level, you can see them. And me, with endoscopy, I say the, the fascia is at the level of the mesos me mesoscopic and microscopic level and global ubiquitous that means that you can see it everywhere in the body, everywhere. And so for me, the fascia is a global architecture from the surface, surface of the skin to the nucleus of the cell. Inside it's the not cell. only in one part uh, with a superficial layer or a profundus layer, and so on. No, it's everywhere. It's a network. It's a framework everywhere. And organized connective tissue, such as tendon and uh, ligaments. Do you consider that part of fascia, the continuum? Yes. Continuum? Yep. Yes, for me, yes, because in my, in my way of thinking, fascia is everywhere. The way of doing the behavior of, of this network, fibrillar network, 
is the same everywhere. But, of course, you can observe difference between a ligament, between a tendon, between the sliding system, between an aponeurosis. It's the, the behavior is different, is different. But the weaving, the network is the same. And the mechanical behavior at the level of the fibrils is the same. So the difference, what, yes? No, I was thinking what part of the connective tissue is not fascia for you? But for me, connective tissue is constitutive tissue. Conjunctive, yeah. It's everywhere. You and me and all the people are a fibrillar architecture. And inside this fibrillar architecture, the cells are embedded inside. And the cells secrete the fibrillar constituent, collagen, for example, but they are embedded, they are nested in this mesh of fibrils. So you would consider the cytoskeleton the three different structures inside the cell? Yes, the connection with the cytoskeleton is total. So you have a, a fibrillar link from the surface of the skin to the nucleus without any interruption, except in some parts, but I can explain it. But it's a continuum. It's a continuum. So we are not made of organs linked by connective tissue, but we are made of a fibrillar architecture, which I call constitutive tissue, in which cells embedded inside assume function. Nested into a matrix of fluid. Yes, you have fluids. Of course, you have fluids. Intracellular fluid, interstitial fluid. Yes, because the mesh work of the fibers are in the free dimension of space. So you can have fluids between the fibers, and I see this uh, this um, situation mostly in sliding system and i have called that microvacuoles microvacuole is in fact a micro volume realized by the intersection of the fibrils the fibers in the three dimension of space creating micro volumes and these microvolumes have a mechanical behavior. They have a mechanical behavior. And so, free fluid, free fluid around the, vac the vacuoles? Well, inside the, the vacuoles, okay. well, it's not really free fluids. Because inside you have water but you have also glycoaminoglycan. Glycoaminoglycan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and so it's not totally free. No, but I, I know, but they, they say most, most of it is bound with the glycoaminoglycan and their negative ends, but some are a little bit of free fluid, very few percent, they say. You have vesicle, you have glycoaminoglycan creating a gel, and a little bit of free fluid that probably is difficult to see with the endoscope. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. My 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 purpose, my my purpose is not to have answer for all the questions. My purpose is to present how are working, our living, the living tissue. It's the first time. It's the first time. Nobody has made films under the skin in vivo. Yeah. It's a first. Nobody has done that. So my my purpose, my my aim is to present 
to everybody, please have a look, take, have some conclusion and we can discuss. I have my opinion, but it's only my opinion. I can share. If you have new ideas, I can accept, of course, but look first and then discuss. Because presently, very often people are saying, for example, well, you are saying that in the skin, there is no layers. I say that. Yes. But undoubtedly, there is epidermis, dermis, hypodermis, fat, and so on. But they are not separate. There are no layers. There is the same architecture with densification of cells in the epidermis, fibers in the dermis, cells and fibers in the hypodermis, fatty tissue, with a lot of cells, also a lot of fibers. So what I say is there are no layers. Please, no layers, no free layers. Everything is connected. Homo fibroticus. Fasciaticus. <laughs> Fasciaticus, fibroticus. That people will start... yeah, Yes, fibroticus, why? Yes, yes. But, and sometimes I say, but when you, you, you see a leaf, a leaf from a tree, you can see all this organization. You have a lot of fibers and then they divide. And when they divide, it's a fractalization. And at the end, you have the cell. And the connection between the fibers and the cells is the same for a human body. Amazing. You know, I don't know if you read Swedenborg, uh, 1688, 1772. It's very famous. And his first book is called The Fibers a book on fiber at that time. He talked about the vibration that could go through fibers and amazing concept at that time. But what I'm thinking is like the people doing tensegrity would love and know all those fibers everywhere and those tension going all the way inside the nucleus, changing the genes and tensegrity people would lo is love that model. I mean, because you were made of- Yes, yes. And uh, I have many times I talked with uh, Stephen Levine. <laughs> Stephen Levine, who, who is the the founder of a biotensegrity inspired by Buckminster Fuller, the architect uh, who uh, invented tensegrity. But he Stephen he Levine, coined, he coined tensegrity, but he was actually one of his colleagues who invented really the model. But he coined the word and make it famous. But he didn't really discover it on his own. Buckminster Fuller, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but so I, I agree with this concept because when I imagine our body made of 80% of fruits able able to fight against gravity obtaining after 20 years one meter 80, one meter 90, and the weight around 80 kilos. How can we explain that a volume of living matter made of 80% of reeds is able to fight and to win against gravity? Presently, the only answer is biotensegrity. Especially when you have a, when you begin to bend and you have a weight at the end of your hands or when you, yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing, yeah. So and you know, Bruno, we have been to the university, you and me, for the same level. Nobody talks, talk, about this problem. How our body made of water is able to fight against gravity. Never. 
somebody told me and gave me an explanation. And biotensile gravity is an hypothesis, of course, but it's the only one. You know, I don't, I don't know if you try, but I tr if you push your arms against the wall and I, you feel, you know, I am an osteopath, so I feel very easy. You feel your joint. So I push, I push against, extended my arm, I push against the wall and you assume that all the joints are going to compress. If you try after the interview, press your arm against the a wall and put your hand on each side of the joint, you joint open. Mm -hmm. And that's only 10 degrees. Can you pick something like this? I push, I put all my weight against the wall, the joint open at the level of the elbow rather than that compress. It's unexpected. And we never heard anything. We never, no, we never it, were explained. Anything like yes, that. yes, yes, Bruno. It was very often I say, I understand that when I I give when I give conference when I show the videos and people they far they say oh, yes uh, oh, yes why well, maybe yes 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 but I very often I say all these questions have no answer I I try to 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 say to people. Please, now, we have a new technology. We are able to observe, to have good images, to make films. We can have conclusion. Please, please open your eyes only and discuss. But it's difficult. Right. So let's see your slide, Jean-Claude, because I know you have an amazing thing to show us. And please listen to Jean-Claude. I have been in surgery with him. He's one of the best surgeons of the hand I've ever seen. He was so spectacular. I was so amazed by his skills. And so, he, it's, it's very unique. So I am going to give you, uh, if you have time, because we need time. But okay. if you have time, I, I, I can present you some aspect of what I have seen and after my conclusion. If it is too boring, please, Bruno, you say, <laughs> and we stop and we discuss again, okay? As long as we stop before Christmas, I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So. You can probably put full screen or it's okay. Uh, yeah, lancé le panorama. Uh, oh. Tu la lancé, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, what's new about human anatomy? The main problem is that people talking about living matter have been philosophers or mathematicians or physicists, but not very often doctors or veterinarians. So th this is a problem. Vesalius is the first who said, please, now we are going to really observe what is anatomy. Because before, the dissection was only for animals, never for human. No, you had some few humans. The Few like you know the um, Aerophilos, I mentioned it. He he did uh, six hundred life prisoner because you know he was he was in uh, they were uh, Aerophilos and Erasistras was in Alexandria, Alex under the yes, Ptolemy, yes, this is the the permission Alexandria school Erasistras, yeah, Erasistras. Erasistras. yeah, he did so, but it's the only one. Yeah, yeah, six hundred prisoner. Yes. Yeah. Gal Galin only animal and the Salus the Galin only yeah. animals yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, Erasistras had the special permission by Ptolemy. the king Ptolemy. Yeah, yes. but er Erophilus, Erophilus first. Erasistras was the master, the student of or Erophil. Yes, yeah. but in fact, it's only during few years and. Vesalius is really the founder of the modern 
anatomy. But you know what? You, they, could, you could say that Galen took a lot of the information of Aerophil and Erasistras and took a lot of that and continued and built on it. Because now we don't have the book of Aerophil of Erasistras, but Galen took a lot of that information, built on it, and then nothing after Galen a thousand years, he had Vesalius. Yes, you are right. Yeah, which name Galen... is, his name is actually uh, like An Andre van Vessel. It's like a Bruss from, you know, like a Dutch word, but he make it Latin. But his, his name is like Van Vessel, and he make it Vesalius. So it's very. Yes, he, he is from a Brabant, Brabantse, yeah. uh, Brabantse area in the north of Belgium. Yeah. Okay. So he's the founder of the modern anatomy. Yeah. But he did only discussion. Uh, only, uh, uh, sorry, only observation of organs, dissection of organs, but the organization of living matter has never been discussed by Vesalius before. But now we have technology, we have endoscopy, and we can observe and we can film all this uh, circumstance, this all this uh, procedure by, made by surgeon. And when you are inside the living matter, for example, you see here you have a muscle. Here we have what we say connective tissue. And here this is a hypodermis. You see that everything is linked here, everything. So, all these elements are linked. And at the beginning of my experience as a young surgeon, I had some question because at the university, you, have, you, you are taught by your sort of traditional classical way of uh, teaching. But for example, the question, this question, how do the finger bends without having any visible effect on the surface of the skin of the palm. At this level of the palm, the tendon is moving at least three centimeters. Three centimeters at this level. But you can see nothing at the level of the surface of the palm. So there is a sort of absorbing system because inside you have a moving and at the surface you have stability. So this kind of question is very simple. Look at a tendon. You have here a tendon moving. And how all the fingers are able to play. And when you stretch the skin, it's always returning at the resting position. Always. You have not a patient coming the day after with the skin in, not in order. The skin is always returning in the good position after stretching, always. How can you explain this memory of the skin? How can we explain that? How can we give a new approach because at the university, you have ideas as virtual space, different membranes, cul-de-sac, and so on, and so on. But it is not right. What is connective tissue in reality? So with my endoscope, I have tried to understand. Uh, you have uh, proposed some uh, slide about, and this is Another example, so we control what we see on the screen, and then we try to analyze, to, to focus. It's very, it's not easy to focus. And very often you have droplets, droplets, and you have to wash and to dry. all the time, and you observe a new world, a world of fibers, 
everywhere, a world of colors, of sparkling mirrors, of fibers everywhere, of different forms. What we see is a meshwork of fibers in a irregular pattern. In dispersed pattern, there is no order, there is no parallel, there is no perpendicular. No, it's a completely mass of fibers in all the dimension of space, intercrossing with apparently no rules. It's a sort of chaos of fibers. And when you observe that, you say, yes, okay, but this chaos, what I see, is able to give the best performance for the tendon. This way of doing this mechanical behavior is the most effective, gives the most, the most effective result. So you are obliged to accept that, you know? And so if you accept that, you can go on for a new adventure. If you don't accept that, you stay in the routine way of thinking. Here is a split between two ways of thinking. You want to understand or you prefer to read some traditional books and to give a teaching which will be the same as it was two centuries ago. So not only it's a dispersed pattern, but it's also moving. These fibers are moving. The connective tissue, the traditional connective tissue is moving and the traditional connective tissue is fractalized. So when we are talking about the extracellular world, it can't be summarized by few images with some fibers, macrophage, fibrillas everywhere, without any sense, without any logical disposition. It's a simplistic drawing. It's not, the extracellular world is not that. It's more complex and we have to study it. And I propose first to begin with the skin. If we begin to the skin, you can observe that as the surface of the skin, you have different colors. But what you can see, it's polyhedron. You have polyhedrons of different shape. Sometimes it's triangular, sometimes it's small parallels, sometimes it's uh, lozenic. You can observe wrinkles, you can observe uh, vascularization when the skin is very thin. You can observe a grainy skin or stony river, like a stony river side. You can observe many kind of of a uh, wow. of skin. So, but look here. We cannot explain. Can you explain all by just line of forces? That, that, yes. Yeah. That yes. Is, yeah. Yes. Yes. We will see that. But look here. That's it's a, a, right? a fingerprint? Yes. Yeah. How can we explain that? Well, that's not a line of force. This is like a... That's an expression of something else. I mean, how would you explain a line of force like that? Maybe like yes. ad adherence on, on the surface? Yeah. It seemed to be the finishing of a construction. But you have that at birth before really line of force happened on those... On those fingers inside the womb, you don't have this line. You don't have. You don't use your finger like this. They already come from epigenetic and genetic, right? Yeah. But you, yes, but when you are in front of that, you say, "Well, I have no explanation. This is disturbing." And but at the surface of the skin, you have polyhedral patterns, and all these polyhedral are different. All of them. And they move. 
if you give a constraint on the right side, they move, they change the shape, the form, and they go on the right side. If you stop and you put a constraint down, they change the shape again, another shape, and they try to be, and they, they change the shape under the constraint. Look here on this example. You have a, a polyhedron, A, B, C, D. We had a force down. A, B, C, D is going to change, but how is it going to change? We put the constraint here. First appear new lines, blue one. First, new lines. Then pink one, new lines. New lines. The polyhedron is changing of shape. Look here, with the last green lines. And the increasing of the lens is 15%. So there is a way of adaptation of the constraint with new force lines. But the question is, from where? And what is the relationship of these new lines with the deep elements, with, for example, the dermis or the hypodermis? Uh, another mean, element. So you could not predict predict where the lines are forming, even no. in this experience. You can never no. predict. No, you come. can't. But you you say that Bruno, because you knew you know that we 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 can't predict the movement of the fibers. But at the at the beginning of my experience, observing this phenomenon. For me, it was very strange. All these smaller polyhedron, that mean a, a fractalization of the bigger one, are around 50 microns. And 50 microns is not very far from <coughs> the size of a cell, you know. So, so the question is, uh, the, the conclusion is that first, our epidermis is not a simple carpet. It is a chaotic mosaic. And certainly there is a link between the depth and the epidermis. So we have to prove it because we are here to prove, to show what happened. And we could imagine this dyna dynamic physical link, but we have to show it. So we make an incision. When you make an incision, here you have the skin, epidermis here, dermis here, hypodermis, the yellow, the yellow structure. And first, when you make an incision, you have some fluids. This is what we call lymph. And we will see what is lymph in, in reality. But extracellular fluid, yeah. It's a fluid, yes. But look here, look here. You, you know, when I was thinking, looking at your polyhedron with different parts inside, I bet, you know, if we think of holographic universe, every polyhedron has a map of the whole. I mean, it would be difficult to really work with that, but every part, one would be more connected. We know maybe something with the head, the limbs, yeah. the thorax, the pelvis, because it's so yeah. holographic everywhere in the body. I bet every of these polyhedron have a map. Yes, but you see, Bruno, you are opening your, your window. When you are looking back, you are opening because you want to open your, your mind. But here, look, all the fibers, all the fibers are penetrating. These fibers are coming from the, the depths and they are penetrating the dermis and then the epidermis. So the link between 
the depth and the dermis and the epidermis is too tall. Here, dermoepidermic are... junction, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, dermoepidermic junction. Yes. Yeah, with those. Yeah. Yes. Here yeah. you have the epidermis. Here you have yeah. the dermis. Here you have papillary vessels, and you can see the arch here. It's not the same everywhere. Sometimes it's totally flat, but here you have some arch. You know the the basal layer we call that. You know in the bottom of the just above this junction, the uh, the cells with melanocyte. We don't even see yes it. yes. I I will show you some some uh, some slides. But we don't even and see here, of color here. We don't see that they're a little bit darker. We we don't see any layer. We don't see all those layer of the epidermis. The, no, there is no layer. There is no layer. You can see here the furrow. At yeah. the surface of the skin, the yeah, stratum, stratum and this is the epidermis, and yeah. this is the dermis. But you know how the, the 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 stratum corneum, all the stratum they have in the epidermis, we don't even see. I mean, histologically, they see them. And the stratum corneum is supposed to be here, right? But all the different stratum and all the way to yes. the basalis. Yes, yes, and the stratum corneum, I for my my part. For my, my way of thinking is a, a conclusion from histology. Yeah. That's mean from a dead fragment. And um, frankly speaking, I never saw any stratum corneum. Yeah. And you see the, the red vessels, you, the, that's also where the, the end of the lymph capillary will end up. There's no capillary lymph or blood in the epidermis, but where you get the blood and those blood capillary, you would have lymph capillary next to it, in theory. Uh, we don't see them unless we really dye them. But those well, be in it, parallel to them, you have lymph capillaries. But inside the epidermis, I never saw any capillaries. No, but there's none. There's, Epidermis has never, if they only get something from osmosis from under, there's no vessels in the epidermis. Yeah, Blood absolutely. Or, yeah. So inside the epidermis, you have a fibrillar architecture. You have a lot of cells, we know that, but you have an architecture. All the cells, cells are not in the, how, like a wall. No, I think it's it's not exact. This is the papillary level vessels here. Yeah? This is the epidermis, and this is the dermis. The continuity is total. Yeah. There is no free plane, not at all. Yeah. Wow. So that but, absorb all the forces. That help absorb all the forces that you apply on the skin and let everything glide, all those wrinkles, all those lines, yes. of course. That's gonna help absorb all the tension and let things glide, everything can, yeah. Absolutely, 